All right, so good evening, or at least it's evening my time, five o'clock in Brisbane, Australia. And we are now about to start the second of three workshops for the use of corpora and data-driven learning and involving that in your lesson planning. So today's session focuses on building your own corpus. And we're going to look at four different kinds of software that allow us to do this. I've been reading the rest of the lesson plans that you've submitted for your assessments uh, this week. I have now finished my comments on all of those. So that includes the secondary school teachers and the primary school teachers. And I managed to see some kind of recurring themes of where and when you be able to um, fit in the corpus use into your lesson planning activities. So one of the first areas is where you have some kind of explicit grammar focus within the lesson, like present simple tense, past simple tense, for example. And the typical way of teaching these is by doing some kind of extended reading or listening and asking the students what they notice or by providing some kind of extended rule about, um, about the grammar point in question. And here it's about finding opportunities where the corpus use can make the process of learning those rules more interactive and as a result to get students to notice patterns and constructions involved in these grammatical rules by themselves so that they take more charge of their learning and then the hope is that that will speed up the learning of some of these grammar rules and constructions also that Corpora can reasonably be used in many cases where you're teaching specific kinds of texts and even the primary school teachers uh, in some of the lesson plans were involved in certain registers or genres of text. For example, narratives and information texts, explanatory texts and so on. And then in some of the secondary school lesson plans we had um, more specialized registers and genres like uh, hortatory explan explanatory texts, um, recipes, for example. And the aim of the lesson was to get students to look at the key language features that make up these registers and genres. And one way to do that, again, in an interactive way and a way that is fun for the learners and gets the learners more involved is to use a corpus to extract the different kind of grammatical and vocabulary patterns and constructions within those registers and genres. So the best way to do that then is, and as I've written in many of your lesson plans, is to build your own corpora or alternatively to get students to build their own corpus depending on their technical ability um, and their access to data of course so i would imagine for secondary school students it should be a bit easier for them to be able to go out and find relevant texts perhaps online and then to put those texts into a corpus for searching. Whereas for primary school students, we imagine that the teacher would be doing most of the work and that the students would then be allowed to query the corpus that had been constructed by the teachers. And either way, you need then to know 
how best to do that. So today's session, we're gonna look first of all at what data you might wanna use. And in your lesson plans, I did give you some guidance, but we're just gonna think about this generally as a group together today. And then four different tools we're gonna to play with um, that each have different strengths. Um, but the, and they're all, they all serve different purposes, but they can be all, they can be useful in their own way. And we don't expect you to have mastered all of these by the end of the session, but it's really just to give you a flavor of what's out there in terms of the state of the art when it comes to constructing your own corpus. So uh, last week, we played around with the full version of Sketch Engine for a while, uh, but we're going to have a look at its corpus building uh, tools in a moment. We're then also going to have a look at AntConc, which is a kind of free version that a free corpus compiler and concordancer that does many of the same functions as Sketch Engine, but it's free and doesn't require a, uh, a subscription fee. We then have a look at two fully online uh, kind of corpus query tools. Uh, these are Voyant tools and Versatex, which represent a uh, very simple, straightforward user interface for querying and analyzing self-built corpora. So four different tools to play with. And I asked you in the email that I sent out to make sure that you did have a 30 day free trial for Sketch Engine activated. Again, if you don't have that, just visit the link in the PowerPoint, um, set yourself up with a username and password, and just make sure you're logged in so that um, we can go through the different functions of that. Um, Beyond 30 days, you may want to consider purchasing an account if funding allows. Uh, but then we do have these other tools today if purchasing an account is not something that you're willing or able to do. Um, also, if you haven't already downloaded these files, if you could please download Ant File Converter and AntConc from Lawrence Anthony's website. Lawrence Anthony is a world famous uh, corpus linguist and he's also developed some very useful software tools that we use uh, in corpus linguistics to build and analyze our own corpora. And I also emailed you two zip files. These contain two, two sets of input within a textbook corpus. So my PhD student, Hien Huang, who is also listening in on this session, has constructed a corpus of textbooks that are commonly used in the Vietnamese EFL context. I think there's about 20 texts. And she's divided these texts up into the reading input that is present in these textbooks and also the tape scripts for the listening input as well. And I've sent that data to you in the form of text files. And we're gonna use that data today uh, with each of the tools here. So if you haven't already extracted the files, if you could just extract them to somewhere easy like your desktop and to extract them, if you don't know how zip files work, you can just right click on them and just click extract here or extract files. And then it, what it will do is it will leave you with um, two folders, one called reading input, one called listening input. You can see there the individual text files are inside. And that's all you need to build a corpus, just a folder full of text files. So let's start then, just before we get into the different tools, it's crucial to think first of all about what data I should use. And so far in last week's session, we played with 
Corpora that are already publicly available and the corpora that we were playing with are, are, were general corpora. And by general corpora, these are very large corpora that attempt to capture as much of general English as possible. So many, and I remember a couple of you last week asked what data does Scale use? And what data does Lingle use, for example? And we said that it actually uses lots of different things. So newspaper articles, uh, Wikipedia entries, uh, blogs, and so on. And they take all of that different kind of data and they put it all together and it ends up about a billion words. And that is a general, general corpus of general English. And that can be very useful for learning about English in general. Or if you've got quite a specialized corpus of something very specific, then having a general corpus to compare that to can also be very useful. So that if you compare your specialized corpus with that of a general corpus, you will be able to see what is specialized about your corpus and not and what is not general. So Skell, and there are a couple of others there you can see on the slide that's like the British National Corpus, COCA. These are very popular, very well known general corpora that many teachers and students have used in the past. And you can Google them if you want to find out more information about those. So the second bullet point here you can see is about learner corpora. And learner corpora are corpora that are constructed from second language data. So most general corpora are constructed by data from native speakers of the language, in that case English, whereas learner corpora involve second language data and two very popular ones are the ICNALE or the Asian Corpus of English. And again, you can Google them to find out more about those. Then you start to get more specialized and into corpora of different registers and genres. So the one that we were playing with last week was the British Academic Written English Corpus, which is an academic corpus. Within Sketch Engine, you also have access to the British Academic Spoken English Corpus. And then you can Google MICOS and MICAs, which are uh, from America. These are uh, also useful corpora of academic uh, writing and speaking across different disciplines. Now, you may also want to use corpora from your own language. And I had a go at Googling to find different corpora that have been produced in uh, Indonesian. These are Silang, uh, Corpus Indonesia, Post Tag Indonesia. And there's also a very large Indonesian web corpus that's available within the Sketch Engine account. So we might just have a quick look at that later. But at least these are four corpora. I think the first three are available for download. And the Indonesian web corpus, I believe, then is just available within Sketch Engine to play with. But if you would like to work with Indonesian data with your students, that would be excellent. Um, and we'd love to hear about your experiences with that, if that's something you end up doing. Getting even more specialized now for language teachers, you can build corpora of your teaching materials or textbooks. So I'm not sure what textbooks you commonly use within your context, but I imagine they are either ones that are produced by your own government or your own institution or they may be ones that are borrowed from overseas, like a New Headway or any of these kind of general purpose ELT textbooks that have been around for a very long time. And 
it may be that you want to get students to consult those books as a corpus. So as I already mentioned, my PhD student, Hien, that's her, she's doing her PhD and part of her PhD is to extract the multi-word units from those textbooks to see if her students are also using them and which ones they use frequently, which ones they never use, which ones should they be learning uh, if they are to get the most out of those textbooks. So it's a very interesting project and that's something that again, so it's one something that you might want to do. Alternatively, final bullet point here, reducing a corpus of your own students' data is another very interesting way of exposing your learners to the kind of trends and the language that they're producing. And if you want to get really clever, you can then begin to annotate that corpus data for things like errors. And then you'll be able to draw up a list of the most common or frequent errors that your students produce. And you can let them explore those errors as well for their own learning. We're not going to deal with corpus annotation in these workshops. That might be something for another day. But at the very least, hopefully you've got a bit of a better idea here about what data you should be using. And in your individual lesson plans, I mentioned explicitly where you were trying to teach a specific genre or register, you will then want a, genre, a corpus that represents that register. So if you're studying recipes, get a corpus of 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 recipes and then get your students to analyze that. If you're doing narratives, get a corpus of narratives. If you're doing um, explanatory texts or information texts, get a corpus of those together. So it's just the case of finding the data. Much of the data can also be sourced online. Okay, so any questions so far? Um, if you do, just type into the chat. I'm just going to st stop sharing my screen a second so I can see the chat screen. So is everybody doing okay? All right. Uh, so I am trying to monitor the chat, but when I share the screen, it becomes difficult. So now I'm going to go back in and share the screen again, and we're going to have a play around this time with the functions of Sketch Engine, first of all. So the first thing we're going to do is to make a corpus in Sketch Engine. So for this, I've already logged in. And when you go to your dashboard, so once you've got let me restart it. From, from last week, you, all you could see in the window was this part of the screen. But now that we have logged in with our trial membership, which lasts for 30 days, you can now see here on the screen, uh, recently used Corpora. And I've got a button here at the top that says new corpus. This is gonna allow me to build corpus on my own. And the trial version of Sketch Engine gives you a million words space to play with. So quite a lot. Now I'm gonna build a corpus here by pressing new corpus. And we have to give our corpus a name and a description. You do have the ability to build multilingual corpora, but I'm not going to explore that one today. So I'm going to call this uh, reading text corpus because I'm going to build it using those uh, reading text files that were supplied by Hien. I'm just going to put this here, reading text textbook corpus like that. So you see, 
I'm able to use all of these different features that we used last week, like engrams, concordance, word sketch, good dictionary examples, and so on. I'm going to click next here. And again, you can also be doing this as yourself or uh, later on. Uh, if this is too much for you now, uh, go back to the video or look at the PowerPoint and it contains what you have to do step by step. So for this first one, you can see here I've got two options. I can find texts on the web or I can look at my own texts. So for this first part, I'm going to use my own text. So I'm just going to click here on the right. And I'm going to then drag the folder of reading text here. And I'm just going to drop those into the window. Simple as that. And now it's starting to upload those texts. This is uh, Australian internet speed here. So not particularly fast for the upload. Time to make a cup of coffee. Check your emails. However you'd like to fill the time. And this collection has about 100, 150,000 words in it. It's just processing that now. And now that's all done. So I'm going to click Next. So once I've clicked Next, the only thing you have to do after that is click compile I'm just seeing in the uh, the chat here um, about connections crashing so uh, let me just uh, just reply here uh, no you don't do it later okay right so I'm just gonna click compile It'll take about a minute or less, so not too long. And again, if you're having connection issues, it might be better to try to do this later. So now you can see I have compiled my corpus. And what I want to do is to know what is in it. And straight away, I can click here to extract the keywords and terms. So I'm going to click that. Now, this is the first time that we've explored the idea of keywords. And keywords are very important when we're thinking about when you're building a kind of specialized text corpus of a certain genre or register and you want to know what words and, and constructions are specific to that corpus and not another corpus and that's what we mean by keywords here so to do a keyword analysis you need your corpus and a reference corpus. The reference corpus is the corpus that you're comparing your corpus with. So we could use a general corpus as the reference corpus. Or say, for example, I wanted to compare narrative text with explanation texts. Then I might have explanation text as my main corpus and the corpus of narrative text as my reference corpus. So you have to be careful with which reference corpus you use because then the keyword list will be different depending on 
which reference corpus you decide to use. So there are two options, extracting keywords. And in the simple form, the reference corpus I'm using here is the default one in Sketch Engine, which is the N101013 corpus. And what that is, is a very, very large general corpus of English uh, website language. I think it's like a billion words or maybe more than that. I can't remember the exact number. It's a very, very large general corpus. So what I'm doing here is I want to know what are the keywords in my reading text corpus versus this very large general corpus of English. So what I'm going to do is just click go. And that's going to load up the following words here. So some of these words are a little bit strange and they mostly appear to be kind of proper names like uh, Elliston, Zanzibar, Abramovich, Farmville. But there are a few others that seem to be of interest. For example, Ironworker, um, Reunited, maths and so on and i can display more of these per page if i click the rows per page option so teenager burglar headmaster skyscraper kilometer airplane so the words in this list are much more likely to appear in my reading text corpus than they are in a general corpus. These are keywords. Now, these are the single word items. If I click on the multi word tab here, this will also bring up some two word or three word constructions that are unique to well, not new yeek, but much more likely to be found in my reading text corpus. So reality TV, space junk, health drink, shop assistant, time machine, average life expectancy, um, driving license, and so on. These words are much more likely to appear in my reading text corpus than they are my than they are in a gen, in a corpus of general english so just by doing that i've then been able to extract those words now if i go back to the keywords function what happens then is i already mentioned before about the idea of the reference corpus I might want to change that. So here I've got my reading text corpus, but instead of the English web corpus, this time I'm going to change it to um, the British Academic Written English corpus. And that was what we were looking at last week. So that's very useful. Or I think for the multi-word one, it doesn't accept all the corpora, maybe. So maybe I'll change it to the uh, British National Corpus Spoken. That might help. I can, or just British National Corpus, just to be. So I've, I've changed here the reference corpus. And then that might see my lists end up a little bit different, mostly the same. And again, that's because British National Corpus is also a general corpus. But say, for example, I wanted to use quite a different reference corpus, then the list might look quite different. So we're going to test that in a moment after I build my second corpus for today. 
Once you have your corpus ready, another function in Sketch Engine is the word list function. And that's the little, um, if you hover your mouse over to the left, you can click on word list. And you can select all words, or you can get a little bit tricky and find the nouns or all the adjectives and so on. For now, I'm just going to click words. And not only that, you can find all the words that start with A or end with Z. So you've got quite a few options there about what kind of list you generate. But here, I'm just going to click go and find all the words that are in my reading text corpus. Might take a little while to process, but there they are. Now, the most frequent words, if you just select all words, are going to be the function words. So full stop, the, comma, and they're obviously going to be more frequent than anything else. But once we start getting into the content words like children, friends, year, um, always, school, family, and so on. These are words that occur very frequently in my corpus. And so these may be some of the words that we need to focus on if we are trying to do some lessons about vocabulary. So food appears often and so on. And you can query concordances of these words by clicking on the three little dots that appear after. So for example, if I want to find the concordances of friends, then this will bring up all of the examples of friends from my data that I've given to Sketch Engine. So I've got here 185 examples that I can play with. And then I might want to use the good dictionary examples uh, tool to sort those by the easiest ones. For example, here, many of my friends feel the same way. I even phoned a couple of friends to find out. They regard friends and family as more important and so on. So there, you are able to, um, it's quite powerful tool to be able to see how those words are used. So just going back to the chat here, I've got a question from Indri. What kind of files can be uploaded to the corpus word or text or what? Sketch Engine, not entirely sure, because I've only ever tried text files with it. But the, one of the reasons that I asked you to download Ant File Converter is that what that software does, it will convert your Word files or your PDF files into text. Most corpus software only like plain text files uh, because they're not encoded in a particular way. Um, but software like Ant File Converter will allow you to convert that to plain text. So as for slow downloads, there isn't really much I can do about that, Jessica. Um, just upgrade your internet, that's all I can tell you. Virana, the answer is yes, you can use a student corpus for this, uh, depending on what you want to use it for. So let's move on. That was word lists. Another function of my corpus is the ngram function, which is here on the left. So again, I'm still using my reading text corpus. And with n-grams, remember an n-gram is a multi-word unit construction where I can specify, say, two-word constructions, three-word, four-word, five-word, and so on. For now, I'm just going to keep it simple and bring out the three- and four-word units that are present in my reading text corpus. It does say this may take some time, but because this is only a small corpus, it didn't take that long. So here, most common three and four word combinations in my data are here, one of the, in the world, the age of, around the world, and so on. 
So this might be very useful for those of you who are looking to teach these chunks to your students. Students are able to extract these, try to work out what the function might be. But generally we know that uh, fluency in particular is highly correlated with the knowledge and use of these kind of multi-word units in spoken and written discourse. So this can be useful information for you. Okay, so just to summarize what we did there, we built a corpus in Sketch Engine from a set of text files. We compiled that corpus and then we extracted the keywords against a general reference corpus. We then produced word lists and again you can produce those word lists depending on part of speech and we also had a look at the n-grams so were there any questions so far about anything we've done there just bring up the chat window just very quickly before we move on. Any questions about anything you've seen there? How about spoken data again? As long as you can get that into text format, you can upload that and analyze that. So the trick is to be able to convert your audio into text format. Hopefully one day in the future, they invent something that will take the spoken data and allow you to, to convert that to text. And the technology is there, but fortunately this, the current state of the art in this kind of software does not allow for that to happen. So you do have to transcribe it and that's what Hien has been doing and a few other students of mine as well. Uh, Peter's question, uh, for the reference corpus, should it match the specialized corpus? Well, if it matches the specialized corpus, oh, I mean, in terms of register, well, yeah, I mean, you would want to compare like for like there. So you wouldn't want to compare a specialized corpus of written data against a general corpus of spoken data, that wouldn't necessarily make much sense. But if you were interested in comparing written and spoken registers, then yes, you would have your main target corpus as one and the, the reference corpus as the other. So a uh, question from Galaxy Tab again, if we focus on lexical bundles, we use engram. Yeah, I mean, there's different, one thing you have to be aware of is that there are different, um, definitions of these things. So lexical bundle can be an engram, but an engram might also not be a lexical bundle. And then we have a multi-word unit and there are a little bit, there are different definitions about what these things are and it can be a little bit confusing, but generally for your average user, who's a language teacher who just wants to explore corpora with their students, then yes, you can, and it's fine. For Amelia, um, this is because the, uh, the negative, the, the negator there is counted as a separate entity, uh, probably because of the apostrophe. Um, so that's why it appears as a three gram when it's actually a two gram because it is three words. I did not, but it's just that contraction. The corpus recognizes that as three words, even though it's only actually two. Not the corpus recognizes that, but Sketch Engine recognizes that. It's the way that the data is parsed, uh, but I'm not gonna get into parsing here as that's a little bit technical for the audience. Okay. 
So one very useful function of Sketch Engine is our ability to build a corpus, not from text files that we've already got, but corpus from the web. And the free version of Sketch Engine doesn't allow you to do this, but if you have a trial version, you can do that. So we're gonna have a quick play with this here. So by clicking on new corpus, um, we're gonna give it a name again. And we're just gonna call it uh, web corpus for simplicity. Again, I'm searching in English. I'm gonna put here, this is a corpus from the web. So this will bring me back to that little window that I had going before. And instead of clicking, I have my own text. This time I'm going to click the find text on the web option. Now there are a couple of ways you can do this. One, you can use a specific website that you already have. Um, so say for example, you might have your school's website on there. You could then enter the URL of your school's website and it would generate a corpus from that. Or if you have a specific set of internet addresses, URLs, you could get those together in a file and upload those. But today we're just going to do it by entering keywords. And it, you need to enter at least three of these and you need to hit enter after each one. So the options I chose on the PowerPoint were here, but I remember actually I didn't get that many results. So I might change the final one. So for example, I might put in here narrative story characters. Um, think of something else. Um, setting perhaps okay so that's going to search the web for those terms and if i'm happy with what i've searched for i'm just going to press go it may take a few minutes so what it's doing here is it has done a search for those words and it searches in what you call the tuple where it does three words and then it does a search for the next three words combination and it will bring back all the addresses based on what you put in so we've got here this first part narrative characters setting and actually if you want to get um more specific you can actually check or uncheck a particular search or even individual texts. Say, for example, there's a text on there that maybe is a little bit hard or maybe it has some adult content. You might want to unclick that one so that it doesn't get included in your corpus. Then here, narrative story characters, narrative story setting. And I believe it is finding different ones for each one. Oh no, there, there is some overlap I can see there. But anyway, all I'm going to do is now I've finished, I'm going to click go and that's going to build my corpus. It says here it will take about three minutes uh, or one minute 30. So it, it's fairly quick. And you can see the word count is starting to creep up as we go along. So it shouldn't take much longer. But it's a very quick and easy way of just getting a corpus based on some basic search terms. And within two minutes, here, I'm probably going to end up with about a 60,000 word corpus, which is not huge, 
I could have put in more search terms to extend the size. I could have asked it to retrieve more websites per tuple, but I just stuck with the basic 20 and only searched for four terms. So it's gonna give me about 60,000 words to play with. But that's fine. So almost done now. Just give it a moment to think. And there we go. So now that's now done. And just like I did last time, I can now search that corpus for anything I want. So for example, I'm gonna put in here setting because I know that was one of the words I searched for before. And there I get my results for setting. And it is built specifically off that corpus that I just built. And these texts mostly seem to be about how to write by looking at the URL names here. So they're like writing guides or creative writing guides, pretty much. And I've got 437 hits there for setting. Now, now I've got two corpora. I can now have one as my target corpus and one as my reference corpus for the extraction of keywords. So if I want to extract the keywords from my newly constructed rep corpus, I can click keywords. I'm going to stick with N1010, that general corpus again. And it's going to extract the keywords here. So you can see narrative, setting, narrator folktale, protagonist, climax, denouement, uh, exposition, antagonist, storytelling. These are all keywords that are much, much more likely to be found in my web corpus as they are in a corpus of general English. Same also with the multi-word units narrative essay, chronological order, story arc, narrative arc, and so on. These are important two, three word units that seem to be very important in these texts and not in my general corpus. What I'm gonna do here is just to compare the web corpus I just built with the reference corpus that I made from the text files, which I believe was, I named the reading corpus, I think. Um, can't remember where I put, ah, oh, there it is. Yeah, reading text corpus. So now I'm comparing both corpora that I made myself. And again, that should only take a minute. And these words are the words that are much more likely to be found in the web corpus and not in the textbook reading corpus that I found. They're pretty similar to be honest, but you might see that the order might have changed slightly. And some words that were in the list before are not in here now. but that's keywords. Okay, I think we'll take a break there. We're up to the end of the first hour. So it's gonna stop sharing the screen a moment. And let's get some questions. But in the meantime, I'm just going to pause the recording for a moment while I take these questions. Get the recording going again here. 
And first part then, we've looked at the use of uh, sketch engine for building your own corpus. And yes, uh, it's a very wonderful, very useful tool, but uh, you got to pay for it eventually, which um, if you feel that this is something that you're going to use for a long time, then it may well be worth the investment. If you can get some funding from your school for that, then great. But should that not be something you're able to do, then there are alternatives. And we're gonna have a look at the first of these right now by having a play around with AntConc program. So I already asked you to download two files from the links in the PowerPoint. Because one of the questions that I got just a moment ago was about the nature of the texts that you need to be working with. And as I said, most corpus software prefer files in plain text because they are encoded in a specific way. And corpus software generally don't like Microsoft Word files or PDFs. But then the problem is probably most of your files that you have lying around, like your teaching materials, for example, will invariably be in Microsoft Word files or PDFs. So what do you do? Well, Ant File Converter is a very useful bit of software that will just very simply convert PDFs and Word files into plain text format so that you can then have a go at um, putting them into a corpus. So to do this, I'm just gonna have a quick play around here with some of my own papers from some old journal articles that I've written. And for this, I'm just gonna open a file and we're gonna have to find my own work here in the, the done folder. So again, these are just some of my files here that I've had for some time, just lying around in my, in my drive. These are all PDFs, but you're equally welcome to use um, Word files as well. Okay. So I've just highlighted 15 files here. And then all you do is click start. And then the software has a think, processes the files for you. Sometimes it can freeze, in which case you might have to work out which file is causing the problem. And very, very large files will, of course, take much longer to do. And it doesn't affect the original file, so you don't have to worry about your original files getting uh, deleted or destroyed in some way. That's, that's not a problem. Uh, so we're almost done here. There we go, 100%. So now I can go back to the folder where those files were kept. And you'll see it makes a little folder called TXT. And there are my files ready to throw into some corpus software. So easy as that. All quite straightforward there. So the next little bit of software involves us playing around with AntConc. And as I mentioned before, AntConc is a wonderful 
and quite simple, straightforward, freely available Corpus Query platform. And we're just going to walk you through some of the basic functions here so that you've got an idea about how this works. So the first thing you need to do is to add your corpus, right? So for this, you can just click file. And you can open the directory or you can just open up specific files. For now, I'm just going to click open files. And then I just need to find the files here. So I'm going to use the reading input files that I sent to all of you. Again, here they all are. It's going to select all of these, press open. And you can see now that those files have been loaded into the system. And they're all here you can take a look at that so straight away my corpus is now loaded into Ancon. quite straightforward so far the first thing i'm going to do is to generate a word list and for that if you look here the different functions of Ancong are in these tabs at the top And the first thing I'm going to do is just generate a word list just to find the words in these files. So all I have to do is click the tab word list here at the top and then just click start. And it does it very, very quickly. So here's my word list. Great stuff. No problem. This is ranked by frequency. So the number of times that these words appear in the data. So I've got here people, there, when, and so on. So that was my word list. Then say, for example, I want to find some concordances from my data. I'll click concordance the tab and then I'm just going to click the search term here for English because I know that one's in there click start and there I've got my concordances with English highlighted there in color so those are the, all the hits there for the word English that appear. And there are 79 of those. Now, a very useful function of Ancon for teachers is the ability to save the output of any of the views to a text file. And then that text file can be added to another program like Microsoft Word or even better, Excel. And that will then allow you to use that data to be able to do something else with it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save this output, my 79 concordances of the word English. I'm going to save this as a text file and then I'm going to load this up in Excel where I may be able to say copy and paste it to other things, whatever I want to do with the data. So for this, I'm just going to click file, save output to text file. I'm just going to save this on my desktop so I can find it under Ancong results. Okay, so now I know they're there. But what I'm going to do now is to open that up in Excel. And I'm just going to open up the file. And I remember that I saved it on the desktop. 
So that's where I need to look. And remember, it hasn't saved it as an Excel file, it saved it as a text file. So I just need to tell Excel just to remember to look for all files or te all text files. And here I've got my results file. So once I've clicked this, it will ask me some questions. And really you don't have to do anything at all here. You just keep the settings exactly as they are. So we're going to have a delimited file type and the delimitation is tab delimited. And AntConc will um, do that for you. And then I'm just gonna press next and finish. And here, I now have that output in Excel. So a file here. Uh, and then I'm able to use this information if I need to. Or say, for example, I wanted that word list again. I can go back to that. Save this output as a text file. I'll just call this a, with, a, with a different file name. Load this up in Excel instead. Again, just follow the instructions and there's my word list. But this time the word list is in Excel. And then I can do I can use this for whatever purpose I need to use it for. So there were a couple of extra features within EntConc that I'll just very briefly go through. EntConc has the function to release engrams according to your target words. So, you'll just see here, it's hard to juggle everything on the screen at the same time. But here, I'm just gonna reveal the clusters or engrams for English. And the important thing here is this little bit there about cluster size. You can see here I've labeled it on the PowerPoint so that you can see. And there's a minimum value and a maximum value. So you can set those to whatever you like. And what we're going to do is to maybe set it at three. And then that will give me three word, un three word constructions containing the word English. So that's what I've got here. English in the English speaking country, English and computers, um, English immersion schools, English language expert. Or well, I might take a bump that up to four. And that gives me English in the world. English course in England, English immersion schools, and so on. So that's the engrams function. And similarly to Sketch Engine, we also have the Collicuts function built into AntConc as well. So that's up tab here and just like you could in sketch engine you can specify the window span so you can set this from left and right of the target So the first one here, you can see on the left-hand image of the PowerPoint, 
has five words to the left and five words to the right. But then I can change that to specify words that come immediately to the right of the target form. So for example, here I might put student, find the collocates of student, for example, coordinating Philippines facilities. These are not necessarily immediately apparent as good collocates of student. So for this, I'm just gonna shrink the window to one word before student. That will then give me this list. So uh, coordinating student, engineering student, improved student, special student, and so on. And then I could find the words that come immediately after student, student facilities, students achievement, student magazine, student union. So there are the main functions of AntConc that we've gone through quite quickly. So any questions about anything there? And then I'll just then show you the final function of AntConc for today, which is about getting the keywords and setting up the reference corpus but I'll just take any questions here at this point about anything we've done so far. You can unmute the microphone or you can type it into the chat window. And seems it's all a little bit quiet. Is everybody all right out there? You're all still connected? Yep. Okay, good. So we've gone through uh, concordance, engrams, collocates, word list. Final function of AntConc for today then is to set up like we did with Sketch Engine at the, in the first hour, is to be able to extract the keywords from a reference, from a target corpus as compared to a reference corpus. So for this, I need to load in my reference corpus. And the way to do this is to go into tool preferences at the top. And that loads up a little window here for me. You can see here there's various options that you, you probably never need to change. But the one down here is the one where we can load up our reference corpus. So for this, I'm going to use the files from the listening data that. I sent to you by email previously. So for this, I'm gonna click on add files. And I'm gonna go into the listening input folder that I've already extracted. And you can see there the files are ready. But very importantly, we also have to make sure that we load those. And there's a load, so it's very easy to forget to do this. Uh, you click the load button here, and then you'll see it go green. And then you know that the reference corpus is loaded. And here then you click apply. And then, so my, my reading texts are here. They're still all there, they haven't moved. But the listening corpus data is now loaded into the program. 
and I can then check out the keywords. So I'm going to do that now by clicking the tab keyword list. Press start. And there we go. So we can forget the function words, really not that important. But there are some words in here in the reading that seem to be very, very specific to the reading text and not the listening text. So the word world, conspiracy, life, blood, internet, teenagers, theories, American, and so on. And again, if I want to, to collect these in a file, I can just do save output to text, save it as an Excel file, then that's all done, no problem. And remember, these words are all clickable. So I forgot to mention this before. Say, for example, I want to look at the concordances for conspiracy. I just click conspiracy and there you can see the examples of the word in context. So the context is here on the left and on the right. So that's the keywords. Now, what if I want to find the keywords of the other corpus? Well, AntConc has a little button that makes that a little bit easier. So if we go back into tool preferences, where we were before, and then go down to the keyword list, instead of doing everything again from the beginning, there's a little button here that says swap with target files. You only have to click it once. And then you'll, what you'll see is the listening files have now moved up to the top left-hand corner here. And my reading files have now moved to this window. So I'm just going to click apply. Search again for the keywords. Uh, oh, yeah, I, I always remember. I always forget to do this part. You have to clear it again and then load it again. And then it works. Always forget to do that part. And now it's not going to work. I remember I always had this trouble before. I'll clear the list again. Usually it does work, however. So to allow you to calculate the keywords of the other texts. Yeah. Okay, remember I had this trouble last time. Right. Apply. Do it. No, it's going to bother me today, I think. But not to worry. If the swap with target files thing doesn't work as you like it to, then all you have to do is to clear all the files again by clicking clear all files and then just swap enter in your main corpus so in this case I've added in the listening files and then we're going to add the reading files this time Remember to click load, and now we'll be able to find those keywords finally. Okay, so remember, and this is one of the good questions that we got from one of the participants before, was that the listening text will contain, obviously, elements of spoken language. So you can see here the keywords like well, really, 
uh, and then contracted forms like m and all and r and i've and so on. Other uh, pause markers like um, um, and so on. Right, sorry. So obviously these words are much more likely to be found in spoken text than you will get in the reading text. So if you want to compare spoken versus written registers, one of the ways you can do that is by comparing the keywords of the corpus of written text and the keywords the corpus of spoken text. So that's what we've got going on here. And again, I can save this as a file, extract it to Excel, and then compare the frequencies of the two corpora. So I just got a question here from Chrysanti. Why are words, why are words such as conspiracy, blood, teenagers less common in the listening texts? And that's because the listening texts are conversations. And it could just be that these conversations don't include the words conspiracy, blood, or teenagers in them very often. These uh, spoken texts are more likely to be about more general everyday topics. So if you look at the words that we've got here, like afternoon, gosh, class, hang, as in hang on probably. Um, Greg, there's a lot more names here. Greg, Conrad, Harriet. So really just determined by the data that you're feeding into the system. And it just so happens that the words conspiracy, blood, teenagers seem to come up quite a lot in the reading text of the corpus that we'd created, but not so much in the listening text. So that's why they've been extracted here as keywords. So hopefully that answers your question. So that's a very useful function. For example, if you have a corpus of, say, narrative text versus a corpus of explanatory text, and you wanted to work out the keywords of both kinds of genre register, that's how, one of the ways in which you could do it. So very useful functions there. And that's pretty much the end of the demonstration there for AntConc. It can do a few other kind of clever things. And I believe it does perhaps work in languages other than English. Oh, again, I haven't tried that. Um, it does wildcard searches as we saw last week with Sketch Engine. So you can use star, question mark, the instructions are all there under the global settings section. But those are pretty much the main functions. Concordance plot just kind of tells you where in the text you get the hit. And these are clickable. So the word bothered seems to show up in listening ok1.text and it appears in this position. If I click it, it takes me straight to where the word is in that original text in the file view. So say for example, I wanted a lot more context than the concordance lines. I could search for the word English and then find it out where that is within the individual text. <coughs> or I can click another text here on the left that will find the different hits for English in that text or any of them. If I click here, hit location, it will take me to the different locations of that search term within that text. 
And there you can use these examples within your own teaching materials. And that's all there for you. So any questions then about ANCONC and about constructing and analyzing your own corpora within ANCONC? Just check the chat window here again, because it disappears. Um, no questions at this point. But again, uh, freely available, have a play around with it when you can. We're not going to do that in today's session as uh, we've got too many people to monitor. So. But if you have any problems or any issues running that or doing anything in that, again, just send me an email and I'll try to help you out there. 